Good afternoon. I'd like to take this time to look at some of the items that you're going to see on quiz number seven over chapter number seven. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and we'll get started. So we're going to start with the U.S. Supreme Court case of Marbury versus Madison. Prior to leaving office, President John Adams, in an attempt to hinder or slow down Jefferson's efforts in weakening the federal government, decided that he was going to appoint judges. And these are referred to as Adams's midnight appointments. One of the last people for Adams to appoint was a man by the name of William Marbury. Although William Marbury had been granted this position, his commission had not been delivered. So the process had not been carried out. It hadn't been followed through prior to Jefferson coming into office. And whenever Jefferson came into office, uh, Jefferson, along with James Madison, decided that they were not going to allow for William Marbury uh, to have that position. They decided that they were not going to deliver the commission. The conflict between the two parties eventually breached the U.S. Supreme Court, and the Chief Justice at that time, John Marshall, uh, would finally make a ruling and he, along with the other chief justices, would make the argument that yes, Marbury was entitled to the position, but there wasn't anything within the Constitution that forced Thomas Jefferson or James Madison to actually deliver the commission. Now, the story of Marbury versus Madison is very interesting, but the significance is what historians tend to focus on. And the significance of the U.S. Supreme Court case of Marbury versus Madison is that it gave the U.S. Supreme Court the power of judicial review. Judicial review can be broken down into two different parts. First, having the power of judicial review means that the judicial branch can now say, yes, this is going with what the Constitution says and it is constitutional, or no, this is going against what the Constitution says and it's unconstitutional. And it's easy to connect the power of judicial review to the U.S. Supreme Court case of Marbury versus Madison, because in the U.S. Supreme Court case of Marbury versus Madison, this would be the first time that a law would be argued to be unconstitutional. And the second part of judicial review is that now the judicial branch would have the power to interpret the law. Now we're going to move to the Louisiana Purchase. In 1803, Jefferson would achieve his greatest accomplishment as president, and that would be purchasing what was referred to as the Louisiana Territory through an agreement known as the Louisiana Purchase. By purchasing this territory, he really contradicted himself. Uh, and what I mean by that is for a person who has such a strict interpretation of the Constitution when Alexander Hamilton wanted to create a federal bank, Jefferson purchased this vast area of land uh, despite the fact that the Constitution did not afford the presidency that power. So for someone who had a very strict interpretation uh, prior to, uh, it seems that now he has a very loose interpretation of the Constitution because he purchased the Louisiana Territory despite the fact that the Constitution didn't give the president the power to do so. But nonetheless, by purchasing this territory, Jefferson essentially doubled the size of the United States and he removed a possible threat. It's no surprise that Jefferson would be concerned about the security of the United States because we share the Mississippi River with a uh, French leader 
uh, ruler, Napoleon. And Napoleon had empirical motivations. And with that being said, by securing this land, Jefferson was able to secure the country. Um, so he was able to remove uh, France as a possible threat in the future. Also by purchasing this land, you begin to see Americans continue to migrate further and further west. And you'll see that uh, carried out all the way until we get to 1302 and even then some. The last item on this quiz is the War of 1812. The War of 1812 between the United States and Great Britain would last until 1815. The Treaty of Ghent that would bring this war to an end would come into effect on February, in February of 1815, and it would bring it into the war. The significance of the War of 1812 and the Treaty of Ghent is that after the War of 1812, Great Britain would no longer have any imperialistic motivations towards the United States. So what that means is that, yes, we gained our independence when the American Revolution came to an end and Treaty of Paris in 1783 said, yes, we gained our independence, but we hadn't yet secured our independence. At the end of the War of 1812, and with the Treaty of Ghent, the United States had now secured its independence from Great Britain. Great Britain would no longer have any imperialistic motivations to try to reconquer the United States. So I hope this video has provided you with more information in regards to these three items on this quiz. Again, make sure that you read your textbook because as I know you are aware by now that some of those questions can be a little bit more specific. Thank you for your time and I hope you'll have a great day. Bye.